Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today, I'm gonna to be walking you through my exact Lightroom Classic workflow to take this photo from this to this in the matter of, let's say 15 to 20 minutes. You'll be able to let me know if I'm lying there by looking at the timestamp below. But either way, I'm gonna be showing you every single step I take inside of Lightroom Classic to edit a photo like this so you can do exactly the same and start to be working on improving your Lightroom Classic editing skills. So without further ado, let's dive into Lightroom and let's get this video started. All right, here we are inside of Lightroom and this is the raw photo. I actually took this horizontally, not vertically, and that just gave me a little bit more freedom to play with the crop afterwards. I shot this on the 50 millimeter F 1.8 G Master lens from Sony, and I think it looked incredible. We found some light just bursting through a gap in the forest, which made for some incredible light rays. And uh, I, as soon as I saw this, we pulled over, stopped, got out, and shot. So let's start to get this photo edited. The first thing I'm gonna do is crop for Instagram. So I'm gonna open up the crop tool and then come to four by five. Now this isn't the crop for Instagram until I hit X, which changes it from horizontal to vertical. And now this is the crop for Instagram. I'm gonna center Amanda in the middle here, and then I'm just gonna pull the crop up, not too much, but definitely enough. I think that is looking quite good. And then I kind of took this on maybe a little bit of a strange angle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down to, uh, here we go, transform, and I'm going to slightly, slightly rotate the image. Minus four looks good there. That doesn't affect the way Amanda looks at all, but it just tilts the image forward a little bit and makes it look like I shot the image holding the camera a little bit differently. So I'm happy with how this looks now. Now we can get into the fun stuff. So let's dive back up into the basic tab where I'm first going to correct the white balance. I really like the look of that warm sort of, you know, morning light feeling. However, what I wanna do is I wanna just drop the temperature a little bit. I wanna cool things off just a touch. We're gonna be able to add that warm feel back into the parts. We want to be able to add it in in just a moment, but for now, I just wanted to cool it off a little bit. It was a little bit too warm for my taste. I feel like this image is looking just a little bit flat, and I think that was just due to the light that we were shooting with. So increasing the contrast is gonna give me back that level of richness and make those darker parts darker and the brighter parts brighter. It's also gonna help that beautiful stream of light in the background stand out a little bit more. I'm also gonna come down to here and decrease the shadows just a little bit and increase the highlights a little bit. That's another way you can add contrast rather than just pumping that contrast slider. And then overall, I would say maybe increasing this exposure just a little bit like that. Brighten up our subject, Amanda, in the middle, and I would say things are looking pretty good. Moving down to our present section here, the only thing I'm gonna be touching is our clarity. If we zoom into 100%, I don't wanna make things like look really weird, but I do wanna give them just a little bit less of a sharper feel. So this is normal, this is untouched clarity. And if I just back this off a little bit, it softens that light in the background and softens out some of those really hard and sharp edges, minus 24, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna leave our vibrance and saturation the way they are for now. I'm gonna do all of my color stuff in the color mix tab, but before we get there, let's dive into the tone curve. I'm gonna add three points on my tone curve and you already know we're gonna be adding a beautiful S curve to this image. It's gonna add contrast, it's gonna bring the image to light and overall just breathe a whole load of life into our shot. So the first thing we're gonna do is come to the first point we added. This is representing the shadows. I'm gonna drop this a little bit, makes those darker parts a little bit darker. We're going to come up to the highlights, the uh, third point that we added. We're gonna raise these, makes those brighter parts a little bit brighter. And then we're gonna open up the midtones and we're just gonna increase those a little bit. Not too much, but you can see that moving the tone curve just a little bit makes for some insane wor otherworldly changes. Uh, but we're just gonna increase the midtones just a touch like that. I would say I'm happy with that. And then I'm gonna come down to the bottom left-hand corner where the dot was already placed. This represents the black parts of our shot, the absolute darkest of the dark. I'm gonna grab this and I'm gonna move it up just a little bit. That's gonna fade out those black parts of the shot and uh, overall just kind of give us a little bit more of a cinematic feeling. I say that all the time. Every time when I raise the blacks, I say it gives it a cinematic feeling. I don't know another way 
to describe it, but I just love the look of raising the blacks on photos. So with that out of the way, the tone curve is done. We can see a little before and after of it here. I think that's added quite a lot to our shot. Let's make our way down to the color mix tab. The first thing I wanna do is back off a load of the greens we have in this shot. I think they're a little bit overbearing. So we're just gonna back those off a touch. Let's see, wow, this image has a lot, a lot of yellow in it. So let's not back those off like crazy. Maybe just a touch there. We're gonna zoom into Amanda, make sure that, there we go. Her skin tones are sitting right on the oranges, how we like it. We're gonna increase those just a little bit. Also helps this line stand out just a touch. We're gonna to leave the reds as they are. Maybe we have a little bit of blue in the shadows here. Not really, it's actually more on Amanda's jacket than anything. We might desaturate those a touch. Where is this road? It's a little bit purple. What we might do is increase the purple a little bit and then come over here and make the purple blue. I think that's looking quite nice. Quick before and after update, we're definitely far from done, but these are the building blocks that we need to put in place before we can get to our final image. I would say overall, I'm liking our colors that we have. I do, however, wanna make maybe the green just a little bit more yellow to give that soft, warm morning light feeling that I spoke about bringing back in the beginning when we decreased our temperature. Overall, I'm happy with our colors. Maybe, just maybe, let's not back off those yellows too much and we might make them a little bit orange, just like that. Okay, I'm happy with that for now. Let's move on to color grading. I might look at adding a little bit of blue into the shadows here. I think with this road, making it a little bit bluer than it is already will add a really nice contrast to the warm light coming into the shot. So one of the ways we can do that is through adding blues into the shadows. We don't wanna max this out whatsoever. We just wanna be super subtle with our changes here. I'd say that's looking quite nice. And then for our mid-tones, maybe a little bit of a warmer tone in there is starting to look nice. Okay, I'm gonna leave the highlights as is for now as I really like the tone that they've got. We can jump past detail, not interested in adding any sharpness to this image whatsoever. Lens correction, let's turn that on, making a very slight minute change. Transform, happy to zoom past that as we've already done it. Lens blur, not needed in this shot whatsoever. Effects, we're gonna add all of our vignette through masking and I don't wanna add any grain to this shot. And overall, I'm quite happy with the way the colors are looking, so I'm not even gonna to touch the calibration slider. Now let's get in to the juicy part, which is the masking. First thing I'm gonna do is open up the radial gradient, draw a radial filter over the entire shot, invert it, and then drop the exposure. Instantly, this drops so many distractions around the side of our shot and just helps Amanda and the light stand out like crazy, which is ideal. We're then gonna open up Create Mask again and I'm gonna click Select Subject. Now, this uses Photoshop, Photoshop, Lightroom's AI to detect what's in focus and what the subject of the image is. It's more or less nailed it here, apart from selecting a little bit of that line. All I wanted to do was select Amanda. So we're gonna intersect the mask with a brush and then I'm just gonna click invert here. And now I can paint away the part where it kind of got the line of the road, which isn't ideal. I'm then gonna press O and that's going to remove the mask overlay. And then we're just gonna increase the exposure on Amanda just a touch. Nothing too crazy, otherwise obviously things get way too unrealistic, uh, but just a little bit, we're gonna increase the exposure. And I think overall things are looking quite nice. So with Amanda brightened up, I'm now gonna open up our mask tab once again, add a brush mask, and this time we are selecting the road. So I've got auto mask selected, and I wanna select more or less nothing but the road. It can be a little bit rough around the edges, I'm not too worried about that. To come back around here, make sure we're not selecting Amanda. I don't have to be super accurate with this because it's not particularly in focus or sharp. So we're gonna come in here, make sure the entirety of the road is selected, just like that. Things are looking good. I'm gonna really push up against the road line here. We're going to add a little bit more to the road line in our next mask, but I've gone a little bit out of the lines here. So we're just gonna back 
those off. Make sure we're not selecting any of the grass in the background. Things are looking good. This tree, how, what are we saying over there? Cool, I would say more or less, that is looking quite nice. I'm gonna hit O to remove our mask overlay again. And then I'm gonna come in here and drop the exposure. This is gonna add a lot of contrast into our shot. And then we're also gonna slightly adjust the temperature of the road in the uh, blue direction. And I would say this is actually quite a nice mask. We turn it off and back on. It just adds a little bit more depth and richness to our shot. So I'm very happy with how that looks. And then I wanna do the exact opposite with our line in the middle. So I'm gonna make a new brush mask here. I will just paint up this mask, making the uh, mask brush or the brush mask smaller every time. And by the way, if you think I'm some masking professional, I'm not. I just have auto mask selected, which is why it's incredibly in the lines. Now I'm gonna hit O to remove the mask overlay. And then I'm just going to increase the temperature of this a little bit, maybe increase the saturation a touch as well. And now that's added a nice level of contrast there. So overall, I'm very happy with how this image is looking, but it's looking a little bit wishy-washy at the top. So I'm gonna add a radial gradient, a linear gradient, I should say, not a radial gradient. And I'm gonna bring this down from the top where the light doesn't reach just yet. And we're gonna drop the exposure. And this is going to just add a little bit more not clarity per se, but it just removes those distractions and really lets you focus in on Amanda and the light, which is exactly what we're after. We could also come in here and drop the shadows a little bit, make it a bit richer up there and even increase the contrast. I would say that is looking quite tasty. A little before and after, things are already looking amazing. I wanna add one last mask before we wrap things up here, and that is going to be over the light. So all I've done here is added a radial gradient over from where the light is coming from, and I'm going to intersect that with a luminance range. I am then going to manually do the luminance range myself and just start to decrease the selection in the darker parts of the shot. And as you can see, before when I'm moving this, not much is changing, and then as I increase it, you can really start to see it in the trees over here things start to get taken away because I really only wanna be selecting the light. Even Amanda's not selected anymore, which is perfect. And I'm gonna hit O, there we go. That's removed our mask overlay. And I'm just gonna slightly increase the brightness of that light. And then I also might look at dropping the temperature slightly. No, I don't wanna mess it up all that much. I would say, in a nutshell, things are looking quite nice. If anything, we might come in here and increase the clarity just a touch. Just increase that there, making it look a little bit sharper, maybe even texture and increase the dehaze a little bit to clean up the edges, quick before and after. And guys, that is gonna wrap up today's video. Just quickly, if you do wanna speed up your entire Lightroom editing process and edit, within maybe 15 to 30 seconds of importing your photos into Lightroom so you don't have to go through all of these adjustments yourself. You can do so using my master collection of Lightroom presets, or if you're shooting on your iPhone, I also have Lightroom presets specifically built for photos that come for your <laughs> that come from your iPhone, and they also work very well on cameras as well. All my presets work interchangeably, some just better than others. For example, the iPhone presets are built for the iPhone and obviously my master collection of Lightroom presets are built for professional cameras, but they do work on photos that come from a camera or an iPhone interchangeably. So if you wanna check those out, you can do so in the first link in the description. You can use this discount code at checkout if they are of interest to you. And guys, that is gonna wrap up today's video. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new around here, a subscribe would mean the absolute world and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.